Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial series. We're going to create the Mini Cooper car model in Maya 2017. And we will use this picture as a reference for us. It has got uh, the front view, side view, and top view, and the back view. So the first job is to bring this picture inside Maya. So let's open up Maya. We have to bring in the picture in the side view and the front view. So I'll press spacebar to open up the other views. Let's go to view menu in the side view. And I will take this away so that we can see the last option here. Image plane. Go to import image. And then let me get into car modeling and the Mini Cooper JPG. Let me open that up and you will see that that gets loaded there next thing that we want to do is we'll go to the front view go to view again I'll tear this off go to image plane and import image I'll go ahead and choose the same picture this time and so you will find in the perspective view that we have the same image loaded in both these different camera views Fine. Now what I have to do is I have to make this uh, car sit in the ground so that we can consider the ground as the uh, grid as the ground plane. For doing that I'll select the image plane, go to the channel box and scroll down to find image center Y. I'll bring this down. Let's try to make it as precise as possible let me go to the uh, front view here okay so there's a small gap we can also give a manual value here it's minus one so let me try minus 1.1 that's going down so it will be minus 0 0.9 that's too much minus 0 0.95 so I think that fits Perfect. So let me do the same thing for the other image plane. Let's just copy this value. Control C. Go back here. Paste this value. Press enter. So we'll make sure that both the side view and the front view is perfectly aligned to the grid. Great. So now we need to push this backwards so that we can have the center area to be available for our modeling. And one other thing that I want to do is I also have to place uh, these views in the center so that I can model them correctly. So this one I want to push it back. So that would be x-axis. Okay, there. Looking good. And this one I want to push it backwards. So this should be z-axis. Great. Now in the front view, I want to bring this front of the car right in the middle. So this is the front view. So let's try to push him like so. Make the front view bigger so that we can see. I think that looks good. Maybe I'll push it a little bit. So I'll add five. That's too much. Maybe two. Yeah. That's right in the middle of that logo. Great. Now, if you want, you can also push this slightly so that the center of the car is aligned with the center of the grid. We'll start the modeling of the car with the wheels. Okay. So let's go down here. So that's the wheel. And if we count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven spokes, so we will have to keep that in mind while we create the object. I'll go ahead and choose a cylinder. So cylinder gets created there. Let's rotate him 90 degrees. Make it smaller. Try to align him in the center. We can also use the shading for x-ray so that we can see the object through uh, see the background image through the object and if you want you can also turn on the wireframe on shaded mode so that we can see the wireframe if we have not selected it 
Let me make it smaller. I'm using my scale tool. Okay, and the next thing that we want to do is we need to calculate uh, the number of spokes and then based on that we need to have the number of divisions here so that we can extrude them straight away from here. I'll go ahead and choose, uh, there's seven so we can actually have 14 divisions I guess, let me try, that's double of seven. I think that looks good. Let me just rotate a bit so that each of these are facing outwards. Maybe a little more. Okay. Let's go to the perspective view and see how that looks. Okay. Might have to make it smaller. So let me go to the front view. Push him towards the end here. I need to make it a bit smaller something like that and okay looks good pressing F maybe I'll make it a bit more smaller too okay so to create the details that we see uh, below it we can just add some divisions let me go ahead and select all these faces and I don't want the faces from the other side. We can press four to check if only this side is selected. Press five once again, and I'll do an extrude. Let's make it smaller. Okay, and one more extrude. Make it further small. One more extrude. Make it more smaller. Probably one more extrude and this time I can push him out. Okay, I'll do one more extrude here. So that you can see that we have created a similar looking style as that one. Now we'll, uh, we'll have to add four um, screws four nuts basically that we can do later which would be from a separate object so that's not a problem and now all we have to do is we need to do this extrude so I'll go ahead and choose the face that is up here and then we have to select the alternative faces one here one here one here one here one here this one yes okay now let's go ahead and choose extrude face pull it out not too much just a little bit okay and then we will actually add one other um, shape outside and then we will create a bridge between them so I can actually delete these faces so that we will leave this hollow looking good and now what I have to do is I have to create uh, this outside tire okay or the rim so let's go ahead and this time for this purpose we will create a pipe okay so a pipe basically has two radiuses so one is outer and the other one is inner let me rotate that 90 degrees okay and we'll try to bring him to the center here. Select the object. Bring it over. Let's zoom in. And we need to put him exactly in the center. I can use the point snap that is either here or I can also do the same thing by pressing the shortcut key V. So this time let me use that point, okay, snap, and I'll try to snap it exactly in the center. When you do this, you have to keep in mind one other thing, in the perspective view, make sure that it's in the right place. If not, we can do some scaling. Okay, that's too small. Let's try to make him match up. I will also check the same thing from this front view. Go to shading, x-ray, there you go. 
So let's make it more smaller and push him a little inside. This time we can turn off the point snap. Something like that. Good, let's check here. What is the size of him? We can adjust the radius from the channel box. Okay. So that's somewhat matching up from the outside. We need to reduce this thickness, which will actually push him like so. Okay, looks good. And that's the thickness, correct thickness. That looks fine. And I might want to bring this a little bit outside. That looks good. So let's see what we have here. Now the number of divisions for this pipe also we need to adjust. Now keep in mind, here it is seven spokes that we have. And we want these seven spokes to get, get attached to this one. So we can actually either have double of the seven or we can have triple of the seven. So that would be, let's say, uh, let me open up a calculator. So we could basically multiply seven with uh, three or four. Let's try that, 28. Yeah, I think 28 should be good enough. Let's give subdivisions as 28. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to align this part to this one so that each of these spokes will have some place to get connected. Okay, and I also want to make this thickness a bit more so that it would come till here. So let's give point one five no point two five point two six no point two four point two three yes that looks good and we will do some little rotation to make sure that those points are matching up looking good now let me go in there and we want to basically make a bridge between these two. So corresponding faces we will have to delete. So let me delete that. And let me check. I guess this one is the next. So there's three I will have to delete in between. So delete that. Then one, two, three. And then fourth one I will keep. Delete, one, two, three, fourth one I will delete. 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 So there's one, two, three, that's correct. So now that we have deleted these faces, now we have to combine these two objects to make them as one object. I'll go ahead and choose the object mode. Select the first object. Shift select the second object and hold the shift key right click and choose combine okay so now this becomes one object and now i can connect these so let's go ahead and double click on that edge loop shift double click on this edge loop shift right click and choose a bridge okay click on that so that adds a few divisions if you don't want these divisions, you can also just reduce that divisions here. Maybe just one. Okay, now to repeat the same job that we did last, we'll double click here, double click here, and I will press G. Done. So again, we'll reduce this divisions. Now the divisions are set in the tool options, so I'll this time go to the bridge options and reset everything. So that should come with zero division, but let's have one. Bridge, good enough. Double click, double click here, press G, it's perfect. Double click here, double click here, press G, double click here, double click here, press G, double click here, Double click here, press G, and that's complete. 
Okay, it looks good. But we need to do some more little tweaks. Let's add a couple of divisions here to make this look like a rim and make the rest of the part look like the tire. Okay, so first let me just double click on this edge loop and double click on this edge loop to make them look like a tire. Press shift, right click, and I will go to bevel edge. Okay, let's go to the options or oh, we can apply that. Okay, that looks good. Let's just reduce this. Okay, and maybe I will add one more division and then I can make him a bit like so. Looking good. If you want, you can also have one more divisions, which will make it more smooth. Looking good. Fine. So now we need to add one division here. For doing that, I will right click and select. Shift right click and choose insert edge loop tool. Let's add the edge loop in the exact place that we want. There. Okay. Now we will have to add one more division here to make him go a little inside so that it will look like a tire. So I've basically added three divisions here and I'm selecting the middle one and I will push this a bit in. Okay. And maybe a bit scale down. So I'm choosing scale. Okay, and then like so. Okay, now um, the way I'm, I change my tools is with the help of the keyboard shortcuts, which is W for move, uh, E for rotate, and R for scale. Okay, you can also press Q for selection. Fine. So if you get confused, if how do I change the tools just by magic? So these are the keyboard shortcuts. Fine. So if you want, we can also have a couple of divisions here, but that's not very much necessary. If needed, we can add. Now I'll press uh, number three. And that'll show us how it looks after smooth. If you think you want to make a little bit more hard edge here, you can just add more divisions. Uh, if not, we can just fix the rest of the things with texturing. Okay, and this area also you can just add one more division if you want to make a bit more difference, uh, create a bit more difference between the rim and the uh, rim and the tire. Good. So let me just add one more here. Now basically, depending on what kind of result you want, you can just add or remove divisions, tweak the entire shape. So this completes this part. Uh, in the next part, we will start uh, creating the body of the car.